All right. Well, we will continue on. Um, from the videos I watched, it seems like there are quite a few people who had success with aggressive strategies. Invoke Justice. The quadruple white is a little much for me right now. It's a good card, but I don't think I could cast it. Boseju requires me to get to the late game. Norika Yamazaki. Um, so this... The fact that it has, it's a 3 mana 3-2 three, Vigilance, that's pretty good stats. And then it can recur an enchantment, which there are enough enchantments in the set. I'm going to start with that. Moon Circuit Hacker is good. Tamiya's Completion is good. Ninja's Kunai is good. But I'm not going to... Like, I'm going to try to grab Norika first, see how that fares, and we'll move from there. Someone might take the Invoke Justice and take this as a signal that white's open or I need to force white. That would be a problem, and that's a reason to try, try to escape that by grabbing the removal spell. Um, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Um, the Samurai deck seems pretty good. Um, we had a person who had the rare red-white Samurai who, if they played properly, I looked back and watched... Yes, if they played properly, they would have won that game. They just didn't play a hovery. <laughs> okay, so I could have the two Yamazaki twins right off the bat. Um, even if I could... How's it going, Void Goblin? You're a new... Yeah, so I'm a droid, Void Goblin. Glad to have you here. I am starting up a draft. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I might just do Kumano faces Kakazan. Because if I'm going with the Samurai deck, I want red. Kumano's just a better card generally over Heiko. Just 4 mana, 3-3... Three, three isn't the stats you need, even if the ability is very powerful, versus 3 mana 3 2. Kumano has amazing stats, so that's going to be the case. Um, otherwise, Replication Specialist could be a finisher. Um, we don't really have any signals. Um, I'm probably just going to take the Replication Specialist, because it's a safer pick, though. Um, we did see some really good blue cards in the previous pack, and um, we're not, like, you know, Going in one route immediately is a bad idea. This will win us games. Oh, it's Weebish. All right. Yeah. Um, your sleep schedule, my sleep schedule, both of us had issues. Um, this is not the time I stream it nearly. But right now we're just picking the good cards. Circus Manor is a good card. Ancestral Katana is a good card, um, specifically for the Samurai deck. I'm not going to try to force Samurais. I'm just going to... I have Norika in case I need it. This might literally be a 3-mana three 3-2 three that attacks and re recurs a card. That might be literally all that this is. I'm going to be okay with that. Circuit Mender is good, just generally speaking. It gains me life, it draws me a card, it's a 3-mana 2-3, three three, so it trades with cards like Norika. So, we're going to stick with that. Um, Replication Specialist can duplicate it sometimes. Life of Toshiro Umezawa is better than I expected. Um, it just, like... I was stuck on a level in the game for a very long time. I finally beat it earlier and went so well, so I'm doing pretty good. Glad to hear, man. Glad to hear. All right. I'm trying to think if there's any other. Aki Ronin, if I want to do the Sam... If I want to do the Samurai deck, I think the Ancestral Katana might be good. But I could... No, I could have multiple Aki Ronins. I can't have multiple Ancestral Katanas. We're going to go with this. We're not going to force Samurai. Another Heiko. All right. With this many this much samurai support, there is value in trying to force the samurai, um, at least to some extent. Not entirely. Um, Heiko works well with the Replication Specialist and Norika. Um, Ancestral Katana works well with Norika and Replication Specialist. So I think it's going to be one of these two. The question is just which one. Um, which one am? Hmm. Like, picking Heiko doesn't even, like, necessarily unpick either of these, but all three of them will not be part of the same deck. That is for certain. Sorry, my phone just fell out of my pocket. Alright. Don't really know our path just yet. Um, Ancestral Katanas have been pretty nice to see, but I'm not going to just pick them randomly. Upriser Renegade is perfectly fine. It's a 2-mana 1-3 that can do other things. Modern Age was way better than expected, but we're going to go with the uncommons. We're going to try the cards that I'm not going to get too many plays with. And this means, like, we're... I would see a lot of good cards for the Samurai deck just come through. Voltaic Surge actually might be better, though. This might be better than Uprise or Renegade, honestly. Um, Kill Spell. It's going to start up Lost Ark, but then you went live. Sounds weird, but I'd rather watch you draft play Magic than me play Lost Ark. Hey, sometimes you just play a game because you want to play a game, or sometimes the mental strain is something, and just watching someone play is a very chill moment. Sometimes you just need that moment to relax. 
not surprised, honestly. Alright, I'm gonna go with the Voltage Surge, because I honestly think the removal's better than the creature right now. Light the way, nice little combat trick. Um, given that looks like we might be going into the... Um, since it looks like we might be going into the red-white um, samurai deck quite a bit, I'm going to grab the Light the Way. It's a good combat trick. Um, Suit Up is a great card if I end up blue. Um, the Monarch Sphere is also a great card. But I want to see what is offered. Right now I'm going to try to see how Samurai feels. And if it's not offered to me, we switch over to one of the artifact styles. Prodigy's Prototype is one of said artifact styles. The vehicle is pretty nice. Um... I'm going to pick this and just say we might end up doing, like, we don't know which of these three colors we're doing, which combination of these three colors we're doing, but it's among these three colors. All right. Aki Ronin is a nice samurai if I want to go that way. Peerless samurai is also good. Suit up's great if I want to go with the blue. I think I might just pick the suit up because um, if it's the hike, like, whatever it is, suit up is good in blue red, it's good in blue white. Um, Aki Ronin's only really good in red-white. Yeah. I'm, t I'm taking it slow right now, almost at endgame. I'd rather relax with it instead of running straight to raids. Yep. Exactly. Alright, suit up. It, because it draws you a card, it's actually a really good one. Um, it looks like a lot of our um, ninja stuff, or a lot of our samurai stuff, was being taken. So now's a good time to switch over. Moon Circuit Hacker was one of the really good blue cards. They did take Tamiya's Completion. So they did take the blue removal, but that should be good enough. Um, if these are the options offered, I think we're going to say that red is consumed, that we're just going to look at this right now. This looks pretty good. Yeah, alright. Cyber Trespassers, Mirror Shell Crab. I could go Akirana to try to push myself back in, but I think that's a bad idea. Um... I'm not against Mirror Shell Crab, I just kind of... Yeah, I think Mirror Shell Crab's still the better because the effect. Also, we only want... Yeah. So it's either Saipa Trespassers, but this is like this is just the channel card, and we only have Moon Circuit Hacker to reward us for channeling that. I'd rather just go Imperial Oath, see how this plays. Um, might not play very well at all, but we'll see. Futurist Sentinel, nice little crew three. Norika, as I said, honestly, as just a 3-2 that could do some other things, it's fine. Grafted Growth or Commune with Spirits. I mean, we're not playing green, but if we are, we're splashy. That's the better card for splashing. Chance this goes tricolor. This set does have ways to get a tricolor, but if we do it, we'd be splashing only the best cards, so only the best red would make it in. Another suit up. Okay. That's not even the island I would want. Alright. Katose. Silent Spider. This is one of those cards that I could splash for. Um, it could take a card from them and be just a good card in itself. Um, how much white? Yeah, we don't have much white. The, it seems like the only thing we're guaranteed is blue right now. I'm going to pick Katose, I think. Um, and we might end up going blue-black, grab a silver for Master, and just give up on the... Yeah, we only have three cards in white. We might just go blue-black. Well, we'll go blue first, and then we'll see if black is there. Twisted and... I mean, if we're going black, we probably want Twisted Embrace, but I'm not sure how, far, how deep we want to go black is the main issue. This is a value card. Hmm... Might want to go silver for master instead. Yeah. Let's see. If I pull these out, curve still suit up is still fine because it means that when I attack with my ninja that they need to block, I suit up and punish them, or I just ninjutsu something out and still punish them. Circuit Mender is great with that because it's when it leaves the battlefield I draw a card. The Prodigy's prototype makes me a bunch of one one colorless pilots that can do... Oh, wait. I can't play that if I'm not white. Alright. Jugon Defense Temple. We're not going green, but that would be a really good card if I could. There is no cards in here that are good for me. I might just pick Jugon literally as a rare draft. I might just pick Jugon as a rare draft. 
the fact that they didn't pick Jugan is a huge signal. Um, I could Prodigy's prototype. Um, just basically say, yeah, no to this. We're not going to switch off the colors. Yeah. We're going to grab another Prodigy's prototype. Wait, did I not take the Prodigy's prototype? Ah, thank you. There it is. All right. We're sticking with blue-white for now. Um, Imperial Subduer is great if I had more Samurais, but we seem to go with the artifact side of things, which makes Moonful Puzzle Maker much better. Man, these are some good cards, though. Um, to, like, I just I can't move into a green deck this late in, is basically my issue. We have so many 3-drops. We have so many 3-drops. I can't pick a 3-drop. I'm going to pick the Ancestral Katata. It might not pan out well. I love this card, but no. I love this card, but no. Pure Recovery Move units. If I had, if I didn't have so many 3-drops, I'd say yes. I'm going to pick the Michiko's Breed of Truth, because it's a 2-drop. It works with Artifacts or Enchantments, so it is going to breed back, uh, so it's going to work with all our little Artifact Triggers as well. So, it's either that or Containment Construct, and we, our only channel right now is Mirror Shell Crab. So, I should, I should finish up some of the games I'm playing right now before Elden Ring comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's, the Kami Wolver is, like, a card that I love. Yes, it is the, one of the only five-color cards in the, it's the only five-color card in the set, with a few in the format sort of thing. Mech Hainer. Could this be a deck that goes with Mech Hainer? Um, let's see. We have two vehicles, three vehicles, pilot or vehicle spell. I'm not really doing much else. It's Era of Enlightenment. I could go with that. Um, try to get my scry on. I do need the two drops. Um, I'm going to try the mech hainer for now. It could allow us to splash black. Weird ways. Alright, Shrine Steward, not where we want to be. Wow, green was... Ac no, I, some of these green cards are not good at all. Befriending of the Moths could be a top end, a way to fly over my opponents. Alright. Spirited Companion. Love love me some good doggos. Um, Ares the Battlefield draws me a card. Is a two drop for my deck. We already have a Futurist Sentinel. We don't need to. Do I want another suit up, or are we... I think we go with a Sky Swimmer Koi. We have enough three mana plays. And, um... This also has synergy with artifacts, as well as synergy, and when I play my vehicles and stuff, it, um, takes care. It actually affects the board. Another Mirror Shell Crab. Or do I want to reach its authority as a cop? Or do I want another combat trick? I like Light of Way as... Light the way as a combat trick a bit more than Regent's Authority. It protects against kill spells a bit better. Um, like a little better than Near Shell Crap, but it's definitely being aggressive isn't the best plan. Mnemonic Sphere gives us some card draw. Brute Suit. Alright. I'm not sure I like where this is going. Um, we're definitely going with the vehicles, which means um, Norika is just a 3 math 3 2 right now. We have four enchantments, though. Michi Norika can attack and bring back the Spirited Companion. Imperial Oath probably gets pulled out. Just too expensive. Doesn't fit the deck really well. Replication Specialist is great, though. Um, yeah. I think I found... I think we found our lane. Um, it's a little weird. It's probably not the lane we wanted. How many Samurai War do we have? One Samurai, zero Warrior. Darn. I like how they have zero rats because I have some in my sideboard. Alright. We'll see how... We did red-blue first. Now we'll try white-blue. See how the distinctions change. I'm going to use play Automated Artificer because it is mana ramp. Um, it also, like, we have enough artifact spells. It does Mirror Shell Crab stuff. It does stuff. 
Simeon Sleem to our sideboard. Probably not going to use it. Camille with Spear to the sideboard. Not going to use it. Nice little forest. Lion Sash. Here we go. We got rewarded. A white artifact that just gets turns into an absolute monster and then reconfigures to turn other things into absolute monsters instead to protect itself. We have a light away to protect it. Yep, yeah, that was the obvious pick. We want to see an Armor Guard Familiar come back around, but we will take either of these two if necessary. Yeah. Lion Sash, come into my pack. We now have a solid amount of two drops and three drops. Let's see how many of these two drops are actually... One, two, three, four. Okay, so we still need some two mana creatures, but... We're in the right lane. Disruption Protocol or another Michiko's Reign of Truth? I think we go with Michiko's here. Um, just the power of pumping our creatures like this is insane. It allows us to go a lot more aggressive without any without being punished for it. Um, we can put a stop on our upkeep to basically crew... Um, we could put a stop yeah, on our upkeep to crew one of our vehicles to pump the vehicle instead of a regular creature. So that the vehicle is the one that puts itself in danger with Michiko's. Reality Heist, I still don't think we're that deep in. Tamiyo's Completion is great. Works well with Norika, even. Um, Reality Heist just asks for too much. Even though we have 10 artifacts, I still... The fact that only gets us artifacts means it has problems. Incestor's Arrest is actually really good, too. I'm gonna go with the Arrest, I think. It's a cheaper um, removal, and it's removal, which we could use. Yep. Ah, two good cards right then and there. Alright. Golden Tail Disciple. We're not playing the Imperial Oath anyways. Lucky Offering, we can actually play one of in this format, and we'll be fine. But I think the Thirst for Knowledge is just too good. Like, it's a draw to... We have more than enough artifacts to discard to it. Disruption Protocol, probably. Possibly the Iron Apprentice. Yeah, I like myself and my, my Disruption Protocols. And even though this is a sharp curve, this is actually really good for late game, as far as I can tell. Alright, Modern Age. I actually really love the Arm Modern Age. Um, Containment Construct is pretty cool, but this card is just amazing. The ability to cycle through our deck is huge. Brute Suit's not going to make it. Frame of the Moths probably doesn't make it. We have Flyers already. Ancestral Katana probably doesn't make it. We have a single Samurai. And they're ways for other reasons. Um, another S Disruption Protocol or another Spirited Companion? Hmm. We do need more 2-drops. Spirit Companion loves attacking in right now. Um, Disruption Protocol, though, it helps us in our late game. I'm going to go with Spirit Companion. We have two suit-ups for it. Tranquil Cove is also pretty great. I'm going to go with the Spirit Companion first, though. This Tranquil Cove, however, we're taking. Um, we don't have enough. Like, we do have two cards that draw and discard, but I want to actually get my lands. Lands are great. We know lands are making the cut. We don't know if Containment Construct will. All right. Mm, so your prototype is ramp. That then no, I'd rather have Iron Apprentice if I need. I might need very light creatures. All right, a second disruption protocol. All right, Mechaner has how many vehicles? Um, pilots are vehicles. I don't think we have any pilots, but we have vehicle. So one, two, three. three it looks like all right you really want me to take the i'll take you really want me to take the reality heist i'm taking the awakened awareness deal with it i really think reality heist is that bad even with nine artifacts in this deck i'm actually surprised i only have i have nine artifacts nine enchantments wow i actually really changed that more than i expected Alright. 
Not sure if I need another one of those. But we have those available. A last... Someone pick... A last pick disruption protocol. People hate those kind of cards, I guess. Alright. Well, we have six cards to remove. I like the mirror... So, just to note, we have four counter spells. So if we could get in early... So we're like kind of a late game deck then. When we're holding up mana... Yeah, the big question is, can we hold up mana? I think Fairy of the Noth is unnecessary. It's not really a win condition. It's not necessary as one. Um, Norika might get cut. Light away. I think I cut one of those. We don't really need combat tricks. We are a heavy value deck. And then... Yeah, so I think at this point, we just make sure we don't die, die despite our value. Is basically our main goal right now. Um, is Brute Suit... Is Future Sentinel justified? I think the Prodigy Prototypes are justified, but not the Future Sentinel. We need to make sure the curve stays low so we can aggressively counter, so then we can aggressively get in. Alright. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, two drops. Then one, two, three, four, five. Two, th eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. So yeah, 13, 13 creatures effectively. That's a nice little number. Um. I think we do get rid of one disruption protocol. And the question is just what else goes. Possibly the mnemonic sphere. No, I think, I think we just don't suit up is our combat trick. Light the way is unnecessary. I think that's what we go with. Um, Norika literally just trading in and getting an intercessor's arrest is nice enough. Um, it could also sometimes get us modern age. Could get us moon circuit hacker. Could get us awakened awareness. Yeah. I don't need to protect Norika, it's just a value card that can also crew our Prodigy prototype. Suit up. I do not need the Mech Hainer. And yeah, I think we just take up the light the way. Lion's Sash becomes a value late game, this becomes a win condition, this, become, this just is value. Yeah, so... What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to separate um, win conditions from value. So, win condition. Win condition. Value. Yeah. So, win condition, value, and curve. Win conditions. Value. Curve. Curve. I'm going to consider this curve. Um, yep. Just want to make sure I have like a proper measurement of all of these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 curve cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 value. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 win condition. We can actually knock out a win condition and be fine. Um, probably the rep... Probably the mirror shell crab, unfortunately. What would I grab to take its place? Disruption Protocol? Well, if I'm taking out Disruption Protocol, then there's no point in taking out the Mirror Shell crap, really. Yeah, I'm good with it as is. This is our deck. Alright. We have a Spirited Companion into either a Thirst or an Intercessor. Thirst if they're slow, Intercessors if they're fast. Wind Condition here. Like in here. Hey! And the thing is, Norika can just... We can just play Norika, and if they ever kill our Spirit Companion, they threaten to let us draw a card again. Alright. I am gonna just play Yamazaki. This can block and kill. And otherwise, um, if they attack in, I could just... 
block with Spirit Companion, then attack and possibly get Spirit Companion back. Alright, force them to Common Flare now. Perfectly understandable. Have a nice day. I'm not gonna block with my good boy. I'm gonna play another good boy, and those will threaten to double block. Or I can just intercess. No, I, I'm gonna try to good boy and try to draw another two drop. I have enough of them. There we are. And we're going to discard one of these planes. Nice weeb lands. Yep, spent extra money to make myself extra weeby with these lands. Good boy. Good landos for our good boys. Alright, good boys are going to unfortunately tell this blade blesser that their blades days are numbered. What does the prototype thing do? Um, Prodigy's prototype? Um, just a second. I'm going to play my turn and then I'll just leave that out and I'll explain it. But for this turn, I'm going to play Replication Specialist, which will allow me to actually be duplicating these. No attacks. So, they are 3-4 vehicles, so they come into play as artifacts. And whenever a vehicle I control attack, I create 1-1 one, one pilot creature tokens that crew vehicles for cheaper. And so the idea is I use this to constantly... Um, like, make a bunch of 1-1 one, one minions while knocking down a lot of their threats and such. Oof. So, basically, I'm going... My plan right now is I'm going to use Replication Specialist to replicate my Prodigy prototypes to try to um, get myself a ton of vehicles. Um, the rest of the theme doesn't stop the minions from spying if you arrest them. Um... If I arrest them, um, yeah, if I'm arrested, it's an activated ability where this stops tr- Oh, it's a triggered ability and this stops activating. My apologies. Messed it up slightly. Alright. So now, we're going to try to bury them in value. There we go. So now, here's the thing, I have two Prodigy's prototypes, so if I block with a vehicle, attack or block with a vehicle, oh no, I have to attack, I have to attack. So if I attack with one of my Prodigy's prototypes, I'm going to create two pilots, and since I'm going to make four Prodigy's pro prototypes, I'm going to be making four pilots, like, a single attack will make me four pilots. I might honestly use this Prodigy prototype to block if they um, configure the Chainfell Center feed on Blizzard Blake Kitsun, because I don't want to lose my creatures that can crew the vehicle. So I'd rather lose one 1-1 one, one pilot than risk the possibility of them killing my Replication Specialist and sacrificing my Vector Glider so that I don't... like so. Exactly why I was protect planning to protect against. Because if they did that on my replication specialist, you know, that would be a death I would not want to take. Alright, a lot of chain fell splint centipedes. I think I will kill those blade blizzard pits soon while they're tapped out. Because this double strike can be a concern later on. I'd rather just lose that artifact and protect myself later. Alright. So just to make sure I get this all in the correct order. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to... I could actually Intercessors arrest and attack. Uh, I'm I'm going to go with the value play for now. Or it will kill a Centipede and it will make me a bunch of 1-1s. One -ones. I think that will drown them enough value that I don't need anything. There we are. Next turn I could crew, double crew the prodigies. Yep. 
So now these pilots can... I can double block a chain flail. And then another one can chump block. And... Alright, so they're not going to go for that. Alright. Drown them in value. And if they block, if they double block to try to kill one, I can just respond with a suit up. Who? This is officially the most wordy set. That is correct. Someone did a math. Um, Cal time was it prior, and this is it now. They have definitely been getting more wordy because a lot of abilities like channel they have to write out fully. The um, the samurai one that attacks a lone trigger, um, like that. This guy you they have to write out entirely. So all these additional themes, yeah, we're an issue. A lot of pressure on board. Yes, this is 12 damage right now. If they don't block, they have two cards in hand. I have four. They don't know what these are. One of them's a... Like, yeah. They're... They're basic... The game's already over. They just don't know it yet. I guess if I don't draw a counter spell, that could end up being an issue. Yeah, I'll make sure to thirst for knowledge. I don't understand your question, Ace Law. But this person is not looking too well if that's what you're getting at. I might just leave all yeah. I have six mana. I'm just gonna leave it up so I can thirst for knowledge if I need a counter spell. I can suit up if I need a blocker. Could intercessors arrest that? No. I have 18 health. I don't need to intercessors arrest this creature. I recognize there is a spell that will wipe my board, basically. Which is not good. Um, there's a 3 mana spell that deals 2 damage to one creature, and then 1 damage to each non-artifact creature target player controls. And all these token cre all these pilots are not artifact creatures, so yeah. The thing is, as much as they rage AFK, they might have a justification for it because I have like I have three counter spells in my deck that I still haven't even drawn to. I don't believe. Yep. Nope. Ah. <sighs> well, these prodigies prototypes sure did their job. I think that white board wipe, oh, farewell. They would have to get a second white land for that, and I could still thirst for knowledge for a counter spell. And even if they fare well, I'm not in a bad position. They were at very low health. I had a, an artificer and a thirst for knowledge. Like, I had resources still, even if they had, even if they had, um, farewell. But yeah, worth noting. Sometimes I do commit to the board quite heavily, but given how many cards were left in their hand compared to mine, I think that I was still winning. Is how much board... I think, yeah, most, most sets do not have much board wipe. Usually they're always rares, but yeah. Alright, I'm actually gonna mulligan this hand, I think. I can't... My first play is a count... is basically counter spells. This one is unplayable. I don't like mulliganing, but I think I have to. I just have my first place on turn three. If they're aggressive, I'm dead. All right. I think I'm going to throw back the Awakened Awareness. Um, this becomes a win condition. Now I at least have a turn two play. Um, I might cycle the mnemonic sphere if they play. If they play a creature here, I'm put sac. Yeah. I can't stop that anyways. 
Yeah, even if I draw a 2-drop, I can't stop that, so I'm gonna actually save the Mnemonic Sphere. Yeah, I'm gonna play the Mnemonic Sphere. Um, next turn, I get a Hold Up Disruption Protocol or Drawing Card Draw. Not exactly the best spot to be in. This is definitely a bad spot, especially if they have a 3-drop to follow this up. But we had some bad plays. This is the consequence. I could Spirit of Companion. Um, it can't do anything this turn, but I get a suit up next turn, and it draws me a card along the way. Alright, so I could, if I want to, Mishigo's Reign of Truth and hold up um, Disruption Protocol with Mnemonic Sphere. And also, it's holding up the Mnemonic Sphere Sacrifice. Meanwhile, I start equalizing on damage as I attack with a 3-3. Three, three. This thing has Menace already, so I can't block it, so I need to start being aggressive to start countering it. Lion Sash... I can't, I only have one white, so I can't really use that. So, yeah. This is not the play I want, but it's the play I think I have to make. I can't block that anyways. I don't have the mana to do this and the suit up. So, I am falling behind. This is no denying it. I knew that I was not in a bad position the moment I saw my hand. So, we just do what we can because we must. Yep, this is the expected outcome. We're then probably just countering whatever it is for tempo. No, we're not countering a freaking mana dork. I think we just play the moon, the lion. Yeah, I think we attack in, play the lion sash, and we get ready to suit up the lion sash. Um, this thing's going in, but we can block the Jukai trainee effectively. This is not a good spot to be in. No, Surrey. That's the spot we're in. They do have two mana open, technically. But the Spirit Companion... Can't... It can block, actually. Why are they holding up? I'm worried about what they're holding up. Alright. Change of plans. New Circuit Hacker. Is it play? Can now, oh, we can now block the Nuzumi Blade Blesser if we want. Are they about to use the Dockside Chef to sacrifice the network terminal? Because that's the only thing I could think of that they'd want to do. The Blade Blesser probably gets in, and there's nothing we could do about that, but we hold up two disruption protocols and a suit up for the rest of the creatures. I'm going for it. We could get blown out right here. Just fair warning, everyone. I at least put on the Spirit Companion, so it's a smaller creature that gets blown out. But... Alright, so they had to sacrifice. We still draw a card. So, it's not a loss. It's not the full loss we... It looks like. This, we get a hold of the disruption protocol and some other effects. 4-4. Four, four. Yep. Portrait of Michiko can now st block the Geothermal Kamei. Lion Sesh can now stop any um, 
reclamation triggers this is not a bad spot to be in despite the looks I will be paying all three on Disruption Protocol because the Lion's Set kept up allows me to block the Dock Side Shaft successfully. So that's the plan there. We are tied in cards in hand. The Network Terminal will get them more Mana Advantage later. This is exactly why I wanted to stop. So we're going to Disruption Protocol, pay one. Thank God it tapped properly. I thought it was going to give me a chance to tap it properly. Oh, thank God it tapped properly. So we counter soul transfer. And we can now exile a card if they try to play it. I am happy to trade as such. Because that's the end death touch and menace. Rebuke. Alright, before you Master's Rebuke, we're going to get rid of your Greater Tanuki. Alright, so they had an additional kill spell. We still kill the Geothermal Camo. Alright, so this is a wiped board. This board's clean again. Four, five, six. Alright, I'm going to start with Modern Age, and we might have to discard the land. They are low on cards, so we have card advantage again. I think we actually get rid of the Disruption Protocol because we need the land and the Replication Specialist now. Um, Intercessor's Arrest will have to be enough. Hear that? Or we discard this... Yeah, we're discarding the land, actually. And we're just gonna... This turn end. We can't stop the Dockside Chef from sacrificing itself. Um, it can also sacrifice the Network Terminal. They can start looting through their deck, but we can Disruption Protocol um, any spells that are important. The one damage from Dockside Chef is not significant enough to stop me. That's significant enough to get countered. Oof. Yeah, they have a different kind of pretty lands. Alright. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Mirror Shell Crab could be better later. So I actually like doing this. And then we hold up the Mirror Shell Crab if we need it. Otherwise, we could draw a card and get the other effect. Norika gives us um, a lot of... It gives us Spirited Companion. It gives us Moon Circuit Hacker. It gives us Mitiku's Reign of Truth. We're going to just leave it as is now. We have um, your Shell Crab as a counter spell, and we have um, Intercessor's Arrest for big threats. And if they try to use Dockside Chef to sacrifice what um, I target with Intercessor's Arrest, we have um, Norika to bring it back anyways. So they need to pay by a pre a removal. S if they have specifically Assassin's Ink, they're fine because they have enough mana for it. One, two, three, four. All right. They, okay, so they should have been using... Now, they should have been using this... Oh, tap another undapped artifact you control. I did not recognize that cost. I was going to say, they should have been using that to loot through. Um, do I want... No, I I don't care. That thing does not threaten me. All right. So here is how I want to do this play. I want to um, intercessors the rest of the scav avenger. Then I'm go they're probably going to exile it, and then I could intercessors the rest of the dockside chef. All right, so they chose to let it happen. All right, which one do I want? Um, right now with this battlefield. I think I want some card advantage. Um, uh, 
Nah, I think we just go with Michiko's to get some threat. So they were smart. They waited for that to happen. Okay. That was them being smart. But guess what? Now we could buff up Norika. Norika could attack into their threats more like more easily. Intercess which allows us to intercessors arrest. Alright, so I should have targeted the Dockside Chef then. They they played that really intelligently. Let me say that. Alright, this thing has menace but not death touch. That is very important. Four or five with menace and reach. All right. I'm gonna force the intercessors arrest to be playable. And so now they have to. This is a two for. This is a three for one effectively. Um. Yeah, we're going to target this because this is our only chance to put cast intercessors to rest. They should sacrifice their Dockside Chef. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright. I'm going to leave this Tranquil Cove. They might have... There's a two-man artifact that makes you discard a card. Um, in addition, we just don't have a reason to um, play the Tranquil Cove when we already have enough mana to cast Near Shell Crab. And I think we're about to close it out. Right. I'm going to start by attacking. Alright. Have fun. You know what? No, I don't need the land. We have other draw discard, I think. No, no, the other draw discard is in my graveyard right now. And this should be lethal. Whoo! That was not an easy game. We start out very much on the back foot. We they made some I think we they made some plays that I think were necessary given their situation. There was probably somewhere where one or the other, or he could have pulled, they could have pulled ahead, but I don't know. They did draw 10 lands and 11 spells, so that was a pretty poor negative for them. So, yeah. Bad start, but we managed to recover. This is like the perfect way to make someone hate you, sort of, hand. It actually has no plays, really. I'm throwing back the Awakened Awareness. Definitely seems like the weakest card here. I have Automated Officer into Michiku's Reign, as well as a Suit Up, depending on what I need. Is This this is my second draft of the set. I'm still pretty new to it, but um, my first draft went 7-0 with a blue-red deck. Felt, made me proud. Alright. I'm just gonna, yeah, develop this. If they have some answer to my automated artificer, so be it. Then they're just solving the automated artificer instead of another card. Yeah, Michiko's Reign of Truth is a great card. The fact that we got drafted two of them, amazing. Just absolutely phenomenal. Suit up is a great. Com I don't really need the combat trick because Mitiko's more than enough right now. Honestly, even if Mitiko is just stuck as a one-one, it's a one-one I get to play. I get to play suit up on. Like, it'll be fine. I think they have the three mana sorcery, exile target artifact or enchantment, and they're just trying to decide which of these is the greater threat. Because Michiko's can be a greater threat if I have more support, but Automated Artificer is a threat right now. 
Yeah. So they only had one target. There's no graveyard, so no triggers. This is a triggered ability. It says it, I think this is a triggered ability because it says at the beginning of your end stat. Did I make it too obvious? That was intentional if I did. We are attaching this here to keep it safe. Um, Intercessor's Arrest. This end step means it's triggered. So I'm pretty sure um, Intercessor's Arrest doesn't actually stop it. Thermal Kami. Alright. I'm going to start by attacking with both. Perfectly fine by me. in a graveyard. I could unreconfigure to block and still touch the spirit realm can target this if it needs to. So well they might just remove it through that process. This Goshintai is actually about to give them a lot of presence. It's concerning. Alright. Shrine Steward. Do they have the Green Shrine as well? If they do, they're blowing me out on value. Alright, Grafted Growth. Not as bad. We're going to eat the Geothermal Kami. That will turn this into a 5-5, five, five, and that and this should make the automated artificer more than enough of a threat. Yep, now they have to chop block. And the turn. Oh. Alright, so they can touch the Spirit Realm if they need to get rid of my Lion Sash, so I think I'm just going to reconfigure it off so that I have a blocker. Actually wanted to double tap blue, but this is okay. Because I want to be able to exile that card in their graveyard as well as any other card that ends up in their graveyard. Okay. They now can double play their enchantments, which is actually pretty strong. Grafted growth. Go plus one plus one counter on target creature. Probably the Goshen tie. Alright, fair enough. I mean, I can um, Intercessors arrest the Naturalist to stop them from getting life gain and keep applying pressure. And I think with the Born to Drive attached to it, that is the correct move.
They'd have to triple block to kill my um, Lion Sash. They also don't know why I'm holding up. I'm okay. I want to kill that Goshintai. I'm willing to lose some resources in the process to do so. Come like that. We can reconfigure. Attaching it to the made artificer. I am getting a bit mana flooded, but does not seem to matter because they are playing hyper defensive and I'm able to punish them for it. South Target Enchantment, well done. The Jukai Naturalist can attack again. Attack and block. Alright, they now have a threat. A proper threat. Yep, so they have this game kind of in the bag at this point. Because I drew so many lands, and they have answers to the problems I bring out, they, like, honestly, if they just Intercessors arrest my Lion Sash, and, like, honestly, that attack might have been a mistake. And then they just start making 1-1s with the Goshen tie. I think they win this game, because I flooded out with lands so badly. But they're afraid to actually use the Touch of the Spirit Realm, which tells me I need to keep this land in my hand to keep scaring them. Because they're scared, and we should leverage their fear. Fork, fork! More Bork Bork. Alright. If I attack with all, um, we can't stop the Jukai Naturalist. I don't think we care, though. this we now tell them they have to use that um, spell to destroy one of these things or I block the Jukai Naturalist effectively um, Lion Sash is giving me priority so I don't need to wait for that Thundersteel Colossus is actually not big enough which is funny I think I attack with Portrait of Mikichiko and then flip it over to the other. Like, there's not too many things they could do in response to this. But yeah, my mana flood. I mean, they got kind of mana flooded themselves. Alright. Gonna block with a 7 7 and a 1 1, but that's gonna shrink the Jukai Naturalist, and it's actually gonna grow my Lion's Sash. We want to kill the Thunderstill Colossus first, if you don't mind. Turn. We can now exile their Thundersteel. If they don't kill my Lion Sash, I can also... Exile Machikyo's Reign of Truth, turn this into a 9-9. Alright, where are they exiling? Portrait of Machiko. Alright, well we have the Land Sash still. Four, four. I could turn this to 5-5, five, five, but it still doesn't block in a good way. In a way I appreciate. I'm going to still exile the Michiku because I'd rather the bigger body. We are going to have to chump block here. But now... We have a 
big old guy. Lion Sash will be attacking in. I think we start with a Thirst for Knowledge. I think I, modern age, I get ready to block and pump with the Lion Sash. Alright. I'm going to discard the Moon Secret Hacker. I can exile it, or I can bring it back with Norika. Alright. Actually, cancel. This card easily breaks symmetry thanks to its flying. Um, this is a six. It will turn into. It will get plus three, plus four. So it will just barely kill the Jukai Naturalist if they attack in. This is creature and or vehicle. And we're assuming that last card is a land. Alright. The Jukai Naturalist gone. Yep. Oh my gosh, we actually pulled it off. Alright, we have a companion. The companion can't crew the prototype, but he could probably find a friend to crew it with him. Or her. I, I'm i not going to check which one the dog is. I'm just happy to have, it, have them here. Even if they're a girl, they're a good boy. Even if they're a boy, they're a good girl. Good doggos are good doggos. Let that be a lesson to everyone. Alright. Well, I'm glad this deck had a slower start, I say, as they double one drop me. I'm also glad I'm not going to have to worry about my blue mana, ever. I'm not happy about the reasoning behind it, though. Can't stop that. They're going to ninjutsu. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Is it more important that I play Modern Age or Prodigy Prototype? I think it's more important I stay on curve. They have double black open. Let's start by attacking with Good Boy. Alright. So now if I draw a 4 drop, I can use it to crew the prototype and move forward on move on with my life. They do have an enchantment and an artifact. So they do have a kill for um if they have Assassin's Ink, that's that's what this looks like to me. They left two mana open. They had Assassin's Ink, is my understanding of that situation. You're taking little pips and plonks, and it's not fun. Alright. We're going to start with the Modern Age, and... Yeah, I'm happy playing Lion Sash even to their death, because it's going to allow me to counter play them a little bit, at least. It does bait out some um, responses, but I think it's fine. In case you're wondering, I plan to go Replication Specialist into the other Prodigy prototype, so worried on that aspect. 
I kind of want to draw out the kill spells on these cards instead of my um, flyer or my vehicle. I just realized I can't block any of them right now. They just dealt six damage to me, assuming no ninjutsu. And that damage is escalating, and they have a kunai ready. Alright, well on the bright side, this pro pilot can now crew the prototype without issue. So I can leave back the good boy. Alright. We have enough islands. We're gonna start by attacking. I could prodigy prototype to Assassin's Inc. This is as we're entering combat. Um, do I want to counter this, or do I just want to um, play the replication and try to force bad trades on their part? I could disruption, um, discard both my lands to um, Lion Sash to make myself a big body. I think that's fine enough. They are doing some air damage. I have to consider the consequences of that. But we'll accept it for now. This is not a good spot to be. We are not denying that, but the spot's going to end soon. I've wanted to triple block, honestly. I'm going to do this. I don't know. I'm not certain how this priority works, and I need to make sure I do some stuff. At least protect my, you know. But anyways, we are now in the garbage can. We, I think, just lost off of that play, because the, the, we're going to lose two more life off of that. They're at 19. Even if they have no more cards left, it doesn't matter, because you know, they have so much pressure on board now. Gonna make another flyer. We're gonna apply some counter pressure. And we're gonna pray that they make some mistakes in the following turns, or otherwise, we just. they run out of cards. Like, we're hoping that both of those are somehow lands that don't affect the board. And good game. Yep. Ah, they had a good aggressive start. Oh, they're gonna throw the ninjas. Click kunai. Got it. Yeah, I can't gain enough life. Anything in my deck that gains life? Um, I have ways to counter triggered abilities, but not life gain. Yep. The double tap down. I'm like, okay, this is how I stabilize, and they... no. Makes sense, makes sense. Blue-black aggro, we stumbled at the start. Alright. We have Modern Age or Good Boy as our start, depending on how they start. Scare them with spell pierce. I think we start with modern age to help cycle into good good cards where I can. We don't need the threat right now.
This card in the land is dangerous because we only have so oh, many, but we have a mnemonic sphere coming up. We have a spirit companion right on the side. We have enough card draw that I'm going to discard the land and have faith in my deck. Next turn, we'll spirit companion to draw. If we do not draw a land, we'll spirit companion to draw a card. If that doesn't undraw us the land, we'll cycle the monarch spirit to draw a card. All right. They're ramping. Yeah, but the reason we want, we only need so many lands, and we've been overheading it, so. Nice cuff. All right. So we didn't draw our land. I'm going to attack to try to um, kill their cuff with my suit up. And it draws me a card in the process. Awesome. Cuff is a really good card, so I'm happy that happened. Turn into a 4-4 reach, I'm assuming. Ah, Sunblade Samurai. I'm not too scared of Sunblade Samurai. I think we still go for Good Boy. Um, we still have the Mnemonic Sphere discard if I need it. Alright, I now hold up the Disruption Protocol. Thank you, Circuit Mender, for being an artifact. They have four cards to my five. Um, that is not a card I'm willing to deal with. I'll take four. Alright. Alright, we're just going to apply Airborne Pressure, greater than the Sunblade Samurai's Pressure. Next turn I can play Spirit Companion, Thirst for Knowledge. Like, we have all our value in our hand right now, and... Yep. Yeah. Fall of Lord Combat. Alright, so they have a kill spell for my fish. Unfortunate. Alright. We're going to build up enough blockers to just one-shot the Sunblade Samurai. I'm not going to chump block while it's not killing me. One, two, three, four, five. Unfortunate. Alright, so we can Thirst for Knowledge or Mirror Shell while holding up Mirror Shell Crab. So we can counterspell any massive threat. Yep, they just attack with that. Now that they can tap down creatures, I'm starting to think this Sunblade th Samurai becomes a threat. We will block. Stop a little damage. And Graveyard for future use. Greater Tanuki is a card I do not want to deal with. Could no, I want the three four. It also has flying, so value. We have the monarch sphere as a draw if I need it, but that will only be for emergencies because they need to attack with only one to stop the sunblade samurai. I think that's not going to be an issue we deal with for a while. Geothermal. If they bounce back to Sunblade, that negative tempos them so heavily. Oh! And they even had the mana to play it. Nice. I'm giving them a proper nice. Like, that was on a genuinely impressive. The Spirit Companion stops the Geothermal Kamai from actually attacking him. 
We're actually gonna just main phase thirst for knowledge. Um, I think we do discard the mnemonic sphere to intercessors arrest the sunblade samurai. Or I can prodigy prototype. Get ready to crew it. Double block. I think it's getting to the point where I need to hold back the vector glider for now. Alright. Jukai Naturalist. Too late in the game for it to matter. To change my opinions. That one does matter. That team can attack me, that's unfortunate. We are definitely crewing here. I'm happy to take this trade. Happy to stop this damage. Kind of wanna lose my circuit mender, get myself some card advantage. This is really unfortunate. Honestly. They get the pressure up in a way I just was not ready to deal with. Alright. So, how much mana do I have? So, I can Chico's Reign of Truth, Intercessor's Arrest, and let's see, one, two, one, two, three. By playing the island, I still hold up Disruption Protocol. If I let them attack, I can block there, take five, six. So I could counter their spell. The question is just how much damage is this doing? Alright, we need to counter pressure somehow. They either deal four damage or they deal six damage, so they should deal six by attacking with all. But they can't kill me. That was really smart, because that would make the difference. They still attack with all, and we still are on the back foot. Yep, they attack with all. We are left at one health. We are still on the back foot. Ugh. Yep. I mean, I just played my hand. Yep, they pulled it out. That was really good of them. I'm wondering if there was just a place where I could have done better. A place where... Oh, right. I threw back my land. I decided to be more value-oriented. And it... Also, they did really good with Repel the Vile. Um, returning fr the Fall of Lord Conda back. They did some really good plays. And we just... Um, chose to go value over tempo and it costed us severe and it costed us all right we have lion sash moon circuit hacker me to goes reign of truth a suit up yeah so we get already the play i like where you start with moon circuit hacker um or I could start with Lion Sash. Attack. If they block, I suit up. If they don't block, I Moon Circuit. I like that. Because... Let's see. Yep, I can still play Lion Sash again if they do block. If they, um... 
allow me to ninjutsu. It will suck if they kill this, but... And black-red is a color that can just kill artifacts like that. But we're gonna hope. There's actually an uncommon artifact that I'm thinking of right now that could wreck my Lion Sash in three different ways till Sunday, and I don't appreciate it. Cost four mana would be perfect for their curve, and I hate that I thought of it, but we have to make... I think this play is still the valuable play. Um, we're hoping that they're just developing tempo and saying this Lion Sash is not going to be an issue. That is the hope. Crackling Emergence. Eh, that's close enough. No blocks. starting to fall a little bit behind because of the crackling emergence, but I don't think it's any in any matter significant enough to change for us to change course. Next turn we have either suit up or prodigies prototype. Disruption protocol is limited by the lack of islands. Falling torment to kill. I'm happy with that. That allows me to turn this to a 3-3, which makes me believe they have a kill spell ready for it. Yeah, okay, so I need to recognize I have... Look, they're at three cards in hand. Stop playing to value. Play to um, control. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, play to control. Stop playing to value. I could play Prodigy Prototype. Um, that allows us to exile with Lion Sash. Michiko's doesn't really help. Skystorm McCoy just dies in the trade. I'm okay with Mukotoy Ambusher because it's just a 3 2 lifelinker. I'd rather kill the Crackling Emergence, honestly. Constitute to crew, so we can line sash to make Mars big, and then spawn. That's exactly what we want to see. All right. All right. Maybe they didn't see this. Maybe they did, and they don't care. Either way, this is my play. Now I think we play the Skyscormer Koi, and we just keep ourselves in a calm little neutral position. We can still cr Prodigy Project to destroy the Mukatai. Skyscormer stops the Link gotcha Gauntlet, which leaves only the Automated Artificer that gets through. They have one card in hand, so if that card isn't a major threat, we've won. If it is a major threat, we still have some serious issues. Flying is an issue. Flying is definitely an issue. They can't really attack unless that's too damaged. Yeah. Didn't think so. This doesn't give... Alright. We need something with flying, I think. Alright, so this will kill us in two turns, I believe. So I think we just thirst for knowledge. Looking for a response. Um, I think I leave up double blue. Yeah, I leave up double blue while I play thirst for knowledge. Oh, so guys from Record can block it, actually. Why did I not think of that?
Turns into a 3-4. Oh, if I left my suit up, up, I actually could have blocked that successfully. I just now realized that. Um... Hey, how's it going, Rustic? We are about to lose this game because I just made a major mistake. Um, how many packs have I opened? I've been mostly doing draft over pack openings. But I've opened quite a few, like 10 or 12. Um, I'm right now just doing draft because this is how I'm gaining my packs. We are at 3-2 right now, and I made some mistakes, so this aggressive deck might be able to pull off the win. The fact that they're tapping 7 mana tells me that um, Leave Up Disruption Protocol was actually the correct choice. Oh, they're reconfiguring onto the Infiltrator, perhaps? We have to take this first hit of Infiltrator and go down to 4. It is un I hate it, but it's the correct play. Tommy of Terrible Secrets, they have artifacts, they have no enchantments, but I think we still disruption that anyways, because it is um, an expense, basically. We're tapping that one so that we can keep our stuff around. They can no longer attack with the Ink Rise. They attack with the Mukoti, I'm happy training my Lion Sash. That is, that is their best play right now. They should attack with the Mukotai to force my Lion Sash to death. Alright. We now have a Spirit of Companion. We then hold up the three mana. Which allows us to suit up. Which means if they attack, I can either block with Sky Swimmer Toy, or I can Prodigy's Prototype for... Like, I have a lot of options, depending on what they do. They had Suzinkin. I think that actually was better as a spell than as um, a land right here. In this situation, that was definitely better as a spell than a land. Alright. Reconfiguring. Oh, that's why they made it. So they can reconfigure that, attack with Ink Rise, and then I have to suit up. That's why. Alright, so now it's a 3-4, and I'm a 4-5. Love suit up. Love suit up. Spirit of Companion. Keep just looking for counter spells. I have another suit up. Oh, cancel. Gonna tap the Lion Sash. Start applying a little pressure. If you don't mind. Just gets us a 1 1 that can crew vehicles now. And we're now holding up a suit up. If they don't spend it, I'll start exiling their cards in their graveyard. If they double block, I am happy to suit up just to trade. Alright. There we go. They have a lot of health now. They're at 32 health, but you might notice a little difference in cards. Oh. Anyways, Rustic Friar, is there any card you're super hyped about? Um, is there any, like, specific theme that you're hoping to see play? Um, uh, my- I actually built, like, a mirror box. Okay. They're channeling to discard. Cool. Cool. We have a flyer. We have ground. We have options. And this is scary because they just brought us to seven so fast, so we just need to make sure they can't bring us down any faster. Bronze Plate Boar. That is kind of terrifying. So you free to play? Yes, I am. Act I am one hundred percent free to play. I just got so good that even though I'm free to play, I look pretty. I have a lot of cards that normal people normal people wouldn't. Oof. I actually am going to discard the Michikos because I don't need um 
I don't need the um, value resource. I need the control resource right now. This gives it trample, so it'll be a 4-3. We assume they draw bronze plate. That's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. If I attack the Sky Swimmer, I will have to sacrifice the Lion Sash. But we're going to no attacks this turn, and next turn, the Double Circuit Mentor will bring us back up. You want three packs? Six to be specific? I already know of Play Neil. I do not know of where the other three packs are coming from, so I'm happy to hear it, bro. Thanks, man. Thanks, Rustic Friar. Ooh, love to hear it, man. Um. Oh, you went to the pre-release, and you got a code. Oh, you... If you're... I mean, if you... Look, that's York. Oh, I got... Rustic Fire, you're a bro. You're a real homie, man. Thank you so much. Oh, if you do that... Um... Are you the only free to play I've met streaming so far? Fair enough. I do know a lot of people that stream this game do not... All right. So we're blocking as if that's going to give it plus three plus... So it's going to have six, seven power. All right. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. We will offer the trade. Yeah, um, I can't do it during this during this um, draft. And yes, I'm allowing them to kill my replication specialist. But oh, just friend you on Twitch and you'll do it. All right, thanks, man. Um, I'm going to just like figure out my situation right now. All right. We got them down to the bronze plate boar. Now we can start doing some options. Take your time. Thank you very much, Rustic Friar. I'll. Yeah. On the condition you open them on stream, of course. I will add them to the packs we are opening after this draft. Because obviously, that is exactly what we needed. Um, I could almost good game them right now. Yeah, of course I'm going to open them on stream, bro. Don't you worry about that. Um, Rustic Friar. Have you sent me a friend request? Because I'm in the middle of the stream right now, of course. So um, if you send me a friend request, 100%, I'll I'll just like pop over, hit, accept. Neither do I. <laughs> I think you click on my name and there's one of the options to send friend request. Oof, buying Palm Ninja. Okay. Double Menace. Well, if there's a way to get out of this situation I've put them in, it's Double Menace. I'll tell you that much. Taking out their flyer. Alright. We'll start with Prodigy Prototype. This will allow us to draw a card with Sky Swimmer, and then discard a card, which we do not need this Awakened Awareness anymore. How many enchantments do we have... Mitiko's Rain is in there as well. Alright. But I prefer this as my play. So, I made an Artificer. Ooh. Don't need the island anymore. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, Rustic Friar. Alright. Let's see how big this makes my Sky Swimmer. Alright. We are starting to apply counter pressure, everyone. DM me in Discord? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, Yeah. I... Fully 100%. Thank you so much, Rustic Fire. I really appreciate it, bro. Alright. I think we have enough blockers. <laughs> but yeah, Bind Palm Ninja is scary. But yeah, we've got this game locked down, finally. Took us a while. Took us a while. Oof. We were so close to death. And then we brought back, and now... I don't think they have hopes of coming out of this. Like, I mean, prove me wrong. I'm certain they will. Um... I'm gonna block here as we... I'm gonna, like... Yeah, block... More aggressively. Alright, it's away. Awesome, I'll make sure to pop up the Discord after I'm done with the draft. Thank you so much, Rustic Friar. Whew. 
Let's see what they have to respond with. Well, they killed my spirited companion, the monster. I think that's good game. There we are. All right. Well, we figured out we were the control, and we controlled the board. Six packs. All right. Rustic, let's just pop open those packs, and then we'll continue the draft. So you can see what are your six packs that you brought us here. Voltaic Surge. So in our last draft, Voltaic Surge was just a huge part of what won us the game. Fantastic card. Fantastic limited card. Harmonious Emergence, you saw in one of the games we just lost. I'm not sure if you saw it. This was a major player of just constantly applying pressure on us that took us out. We have ourselves a good Uncommon Wild card. <coughs> March of Reckless Joy. So I think there actually might be an aggressive deck that could play March of Reckless Joy. It would be more as a one-mana instant speed tormenting voice than as an actual, um, like, X card. You would use this Exile... A a red spell that you don't need anymore. Perhaps this is a non-creature matchup, so you don't need that Frostbite anymore. So you play, pay one for Exile Frostbite, and you kind of Reckless Impulse at instant speed for one mana. That's where I think that sees play. So... I don't think that card makes sense. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, Sunblade Samurai! I've been, I've been wanting to draft this card. It's like... It's just a good big body... And it also allows you to splash white. So, like, if you have one good white card, if you have two, if you draft two Sunblade Samurais, you are able to splash white no matter what. And that's really cool. Unforgiving one, just good for a sort of general theme. Hey, another march. Um, march of burgeoning life. I've heard. I have a friend who plays modern and stuff. He's super hyped about this card. He said there's like some amazing combo potential with it. I have problems seeing it. Um, it took me a while to look at this, like, the spell Flash. And then if you treat it as that card you exiling is the creature you're flashing into play, this seems like a more viable card. But it's just, like, it's pretty expensive. You have to have a lot of value. Basically, I see this as flashing in Werewolf Pack Leader. Um, so, because double Werewolf Pack Leader in the mono green deck is very threatening. Um, if you have a lot of uncommon wild cards, I think you get a bit more Valk progress for crafting all the... That is correct, Ace Law, but that involves you... That is for people that are opening, like, 200 packs. I have so far opened with these, I will probably have opened 20. By the end of the set, I may, I might open 100 by the end of the set. Vault is not very valuable. For those who don't know, the Vault consists of three uncommon wild cards, two rare wild cards, and one mythic wild card. I have to use a bunch of my uncommon wild cards to get into that position. I'd rather just... I'd rather just let the vault progress naturally. I'd rather have my uncommons for when I need them. Um, just allows me to craft if I need a his if I want to play a historic budget deck, which is a friend of mine's been working on that. Um, I know you get vault progress for drafting them as well. Um, I just I know the I know the trick where you craft the cards beforehand. I just it's for um, if you look at the value I've ma um, people have mapped it out. It's only really valuable if you specifically are going to be like getting the entire set. If you're spending your time um, getting all the cards or a theme. Um, I'm not really that sort of person. I play with what I have. And then I save up my crafts so I can make like one or two great decks. And then I never touch them again. As I said, if you have a lot of wild cards already. Fair enough. Hey, more wild cards. Always appreciate. Always appreciate. First reality dice because I don't... You need to have so many artifacts in this deck. I just don't believe... You need so many artifacts in your deck for this to work. If it was a blue and six, I'd be a lot more considering. Because then you can go, you know, it could go to one blue mana. So your artifact deck could have more monocolored lands. But as is, two blue mana is actually quite expensive. I just don't believe in it. Sorry, Reality Heist. You were this close. 230 uncommon wild cards. Don't think you can ever cash th that in. Okay, I'm seeing where your argument's coming from, Ace Law. I'm seeing the argument. This is my first Okiba? I I am really up on that for, like, limited. It, one of our people, one of the people beat me with that, I'm pretty sure. Weaver of Harmony. Oh, okay. This is an amazing card. This is just, like, if there's an Enchantress deck, 
the fact that this is activated or triggered ability, like literally anything that an enchantment does, this can duplicate it. This is like legendary creature tiers of advantage. They kept it to one per turn, but uh, still, still it's amazing. Moon Snare Specialist, hey, this is a good card. So one of the things about these two cards is their enter the battlefield triggers and ninjutsu. So if you have enough mana, you could like ninjutsu this in to have its trigger on another creature, and then you can ninjutsu this back for another creature at the same turn if you have enough mana. Which two and three, kind of cheap. Ryu Storm's Edge. A person in my last draft could have won the game off of this card alone. They just made some major mistakes. There were times where they did not attack, where there it was a literally free two. So, it ended up costing them the game. Dealt 10 damage nonetheless, but... Alright. Lion Sash. We've been seeing how well this has been doing in my draft. Good card. Glad to have more copies, because if you want one, you want to. Alright. Well, everyone, thank you, Rustic Friar, for being the person giving us those 10 packs for this quick pack opening. And with that intermission out of the way... We begin, we continue our draft. Talos. We have lands. We have Lion Sash. We have Automated Artificer. I think I'm going to play the Automated Artificer first for two reasons. One, it can pump out the Sash quickly. Two, it, um... It, if it draws in any threats... It's a good thing because that means the threats aren't elsewhere. I'm going to play my island next, even though Lion Sash wants me to play all my planes. Because, um... Ugh. Sorry, I'm having trouble saying the words. Can't say much later yourself. Good good luck. Thank you very much, Ace Law. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me over this draft. Wander Sleeve with Water and Art. This person paid the $50 price. They should be rewarded. Good for you, Talos. Buying 100 packs, keeping this game functioning. Are you going to kill spell my anime artificer? I'd really appreciate it. That way I can Lion Sash and know that I've already taken out one of your threats. Okay. So I'm just trying to decide, do I want to play Nichigos or do I want to play Lion Sash? I could technically play both, but it's just not. Alright. New plan. I think I... Yeah, I'm going to use Automated Artificer. Wow. I think I'm okay playing into it. The Michigo Strain of Truth is going to be... Huge in value. Sacri We're going to play Mnemonic Sphere. We're going to play Lion Sash. Alright. Colleges Terrarium. So, we... Play the theme that they are threatened and need to kill. Sky Swimmer Koi comes out next turn. They are looking to be the defender and us the aggressor. Chainfoil Centipede. And the threat to me. I can Michigo's Reign and hold up the Mnemonic Sphere. That is an option. It will give plus four to... Um, any attacks? Sky Swimmer Koi just develops a body now. I'm the aggressor, not them. I'm not, not going to bother with their chain fail scent bead. Let it flail away. They do have a M Master's Rebuke if they want to use it, but I'm just not worried about the four damage. I have a response, to put simply. Let's see, they ha I'm assuming they attack and have the fight card. Maybe they put a plus one plus one card on the centipede? Nope. Alright. Start with... No, 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 no. This gets bigger because... It. We're gonna pump up the Sky Swimmer Koi because I don't think they have a way to deal with it properly. Um, the one thing I'm thinking of is they'd have to have specifically the Wandering Emperor. 
They need specifically this mythic rare to deal with a Sky Swimmer Koi. I am the Emperor Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. Literally, they needed this mythic rare. No other card in the in the game could have solved that situation as cleanly. Uh, that angers me. Well, if there's anything to die to, the Wandering Emperor, from a person with the Wandering Emperor sleeve and the Wandering Emperor art. That's a fine way to go. Yeah, it does. So they're gonna put a plus one, plus one kind of chain file. Again, the only card. Mythic. This is like the best card in the entire set, by the way. So the fact that they have this really puts me on the back burner. I, I literally think they were green-black, and then they saw the Wandering Emperor, and they basically had to splash for it. If they attack, that's a mistake. Just fly out. Alright. Well, maybe they have a combat trick. Alright. We'll take five. And then we kill the Wandering Emperor. Or at least that's the intent. Alright. So they dealt much less damage, and they have to discard a creature to kill one of mine. Alright, so they discard the Flail. And... We're going to get rid of the flail as well. Alright. Well, they need something for my automated artificer. Or it's going to kill the wanderer. I'm going to Replication Specialist to stop this first, and I'll worry about the Disruption Protocol on a later turn, because they should always be gain threats later on than further on. I'll play into whatever combat trick you have here. Feel free. Amazing. This thing doesn't have Death Touch itself? Perfect. Alright. Flyer flies in. Talos. Just because the Wandering Emperor is dead doesn't mean the game's over. I mean, it was. It probably was. But you had card advantage, buddy. You had card advantage. Technically, you have attacked and traded with the portrait. I mean, you couldn't. But technically... Okay, this one actually has plays, and we're throwing away an island because we have enough lands. I will be playing Michiko's Reign as a 1-1. One, one. Don't test me. Replication Specialist will come when the time comes. They also mulligan, fortunately. Yeah, I will play a turn one, turn two Michigos to make sure I have some board presence. Because I just need to make sure I don't die early, really. 
Hey, I like your color combination. I appreciate it. And they have the vampire lands. Alright, we have a thirst for knowledge or a disruption protocol, depending on what's more threatening. Like, if they play a Kudama of the West Tree here, I'm going to Disruption Protocol. Otherwise, I'm just going to Thirst for Knowledge and look for cards. And I can get rid of the Replication Specialist if I need be. Alright. I'm going to discard the land. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alright. We have to suit up. And if they attack, I will unsuit up before I disruption before I block, because I wanna make sure they don't have Oh, I should have disruption protocol that. You gonna fall for it? There's no winning in this situation. I could wait on Michiko's, hold up the, um, the disruption protocol. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just keep them completely off the board. Otherwise, I'm Michiko's. And then... They're going to ninjutsu something in. I don't want... Um... I, I can't counter um, cards that are not spells. So we're going to just play that because I can't Disruption Protocol a Ninjutsu. And there's a high enough probability that this turn is them Ninjutsuing that I don't want to take the risk. They hold the Unspeakable. All right. Has to deal combat damage to a player, so no point in attack. Oh, actually, there is point in attacking. Sweet. Yeah, I think we just Sky Swimmer coin now. They are about to get some major value, and we have to deal with that, but we'll be fine. And the disruption protocol is pretty poor. We'll probably just cycle them in the mnemonic sphere. To me, it's completion. Unfortunate. But. Oh, loses all abilities. Okay. Um, that's a really good blue saga. Oh, yes, this is an amazing blue saga. I'm gonna get rid of the awakened awareness. That's not my win condition right now. Good boy. We're gonna end the turn, leaving up our disruption protocol if we need it. As well as, yeah, this. I think, yeah, now that we have two disruption protocols, now that we are facing a vision of the unspeakable, it's a good idea to have those there. For things as such. You want a disruption protocol, my disruption protocol? I'm down. I'll trade blow for blow. Alright. 
Alright, so the ninjutsu to... Which one are they bouncing? My portrait? Because if they bounce my portrait... Yeah, there's no good bounces for them, though. If they bounce their visions? Okay! I like that, because guess what? I can counter that. Not that you know. Alright. And this is an artifact, so we'll help there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ten. Attack with all. Get them low on health. Alright, this is the turn where they behold the unspeakable again. I'm going to disrupt and protocol it. No, no. Yep. That's why I like counter spells, everyone. I mean, we have a two drop into a three drop. I'm going for it. Like, we have a 2-drop into a 3-drop, a single land gets us a 4-drop, doesn't matter the color. Alright, just playing Moon Circuit. If I draw an island, I could Prodigy and... You want to respond? You have the Wanderer's Intervention, 4 damage to Moon Circuit Hacker? Nope. They look like they wanted to do something, but they didn't. Alright, and we're just gonna Sky Swimmer Koi and leave it at that. No need to attack through the Golden Tails Disciple, no need to give them life gain. islands or four planes so right now they're monocolored intercessors arrest if they attack with golden tail i think i might just double block we kill the moon circuit hacker but so this guy's going to koi attack Do they have another Wanderer? Is Sky Swimmer Koi going to die to a second Wanderer in Limited? Nope. I could Near Shell Crab to save my creature. Sure. Why not? So right now they're monocolored, which tells me they have the, um, there, there was, um, the, what's the card, the, the white invoke was in this, was in my packs, so they have that, good for them. I should have played Modern Age first, if I drew a land I could have still played that. Alright, so now they could crew a 3 2 Dragonfly suit. I'm gonna attack and um, encourage them to block the block. Um, I'm happy with this trade. And then I'll Replication Specialist. I think my Replication Specialist is far more valuable than my Sky Swim McCoy. And that drew out most answers. They now have another threat they need to resolve. Yeah, they're mono-white. 
You don't play six planes without having the other land available at some point. Fall of Lord Conda. Alright. They are running out of cards, though. That is the leverage I need. Perhaps the Kyren is threatening in several ways. I'm going to start by just attacking with Moon Circuit Hacker. I can suit up if I need to. And otherwise they might be too scared to block. Because obviously I've been not attacking this entire time. need that anymore. I'd rather have the land. Alright. Honestly, should have attacked with Circuit Mender as well. Oh, but if I attacked with Circuit Mender as well, they could have um, just backswinged me and gained two life, and it would have been putting me at a disadvantage. So, Clots of Kyren, as long as I could prevent from... Um, as long as I can prevent them from reconfiguring that, I'll be good. Alright. If they can reconfigure the Cross Little Chiron, I think I, that's GG. I think my actual play was I should have played the Mnemonic Sphere and um, looked for my Inquisitor's Arrest. Yes, that was the correct play. I might lose because of my misplay, to be clear. Because they drew eight lands, but it doesn't matter because Cloud Steel, if I can't resolve the creature, it's just inevitability. What answer do I have for Quips? Cloud Steel. Intercessors doesn't. It's activated abilities, it doesn't matter once it's already equipped. Yep, if they equip that um, Clots Lokiran, I have no win condition other than convince them that they can attack in safely. Convince them to take it off, basically. Mill isn't even a win condition because um, that's not how the card works. So I have to draw the Intercessor's Arrest. So my decision point there was horrible. Just to be clear. Invoke Justice, I basically guaranteed that was in the deck. Alright. So I have one more turn to draw the Intercessor's Arrest, I think. Alright, so they make a 6-7. I'm blocking with a circuit mender 100%. Circuit mender, draw me my solution to Cloud's Little Chiron. I made a mistake. Let's see how thoroughly I am punished for it. No enchantments in my grave. Played the Invoke Justice, so I don't need to worry about that. This crew's for one, so they can actually crew it, but... It's okay. No enchantments in here. I can Lion Sash exile their other Golden Tail to make sure that's not an issue, at least. Um, I can crew the Prodigy Prototype with that. I'm going to do this to try and not make it obvious that I can't kill the Clouds Little Kieran.
looking to build a crew. I just realized because of these pilots, I probably could have attacked them both. Oh well. Yep. With all the lands, they probably going to crew the Golden Tail of Zavo with the gods of Kirin, and then I need to somehow convince them to let the Golden Tail die. Which is not an easy thing to convince someone to do. Do I block the Dragonfly suit, or do I save the Vector Glider to equip the Lion Sash and keep myself alive? How many flyers do I have left in the deck? Zero. I have to take the hit. I have no choice. holding up. Oh. Um, fragment to crew. Right from the graveyard. And I think I'm gonna exile from my own graveyard. Uh, land. And no enchantments in here? Nope. So in other words, we have technically we haven't lost the game technically, but we're in, in a bad spot. We're in a very bad spot. Not big enough yet. No blocks. Let's see how they respond to this. They might just take all the damage, which allows my Moon Circuit Hacker to cycle. Six, six, seven. I do not need this planes. Alright, so they're drawing a card off of that. Alright. So they want to draw the card, is my guess. And they're not. They are intimidated by the Moon Circuit Hacker. That's what I wanted to see. Alright. I am playing this out because there's a possibility people have been making mistakes around me. We're gonna leave it as is. Yeah, I think this person might have been in my um, pack set 
and they were capable, uh, they're the ones that picked up the, um, they're the ones that picked up the invoke. Which, the fact that they were able to pull off a mono white is quite impressive. I'm gonna kill that thing, though. Well, we went 6-3. 7-0, then 6-3. Those are two very good numbers to see, nonetheless. Opponent had a good deck. I So, I played Ron. I should have um, dug deeper to try to find my... Uh, I have a response in here that could stop it from crew, from crewing and such. Because I could not win the game once the Cloud Steel Chiron was on a body. I did not play to that out, and I was punished. I tried to play it through when I've worked. Yep. Good matches. I made a mistake there. It wouldn't have mattered because we drew through enough of our deck to know we would not have drawn it in time. But nonetheless, that was still a mistake and you need to consider that for improvements next time. Understand that that is like, un not just understand your win condition, understand your lose condition. Ooh, explosive singularity. I have some mean decks I want to try with this card. That's good. All right. Ooh. And next is Eater of Virtue. Always nice to... Thanks. Lizard Blades. <laughs> Ooh, I now have two Lizard Blades. That's going to be a... I could possibly build a deck involving them now. That's good. Another March of Reckless Joy. And Overhead Up. Alright. 